here we go. All right, so um, so last class we did a little inquiry activity um, where we talked about self communication and kind of how that works. And um, so today we're kind of just expanding upon that. What happens when a cell is communicated with? Okay, so what happens to the signal? Um, and then what are the consequences that happen inside the cell? So um, can you guys see my screen now? Like the game? Okay. Um, so have any of you guys ever played the game Mousetrap? This is a picture of the game Mousetrap. Um, so Mousetrap was a very popular game. Uh, I guess this commercial is from 1990, so it's a long time ago, but um, I absolutely loved playing this game uh, when I was younger. And I don't, I don't know why, I think just because of, I don't know, because of all like the little toys in the game. But when I started teaching this class and this chapter specifically, it really reminded me of this game because of the way the game works. So I'm gonna let you watch the commercial, then we'll kind of talk about how it connects into class. Um, so here you go. Step back. Hey, give that back. Mouse trouble? Then you need mouse trap. Mouse trap. I guarantee it's the craziest trap you'll ever see. The first to capture everyone else's mouse is the winner. Just turn the crank and snap the plank and boot the marble right down the chute. Now watch it roll and hit the pole and knock the ball in the rubber up top, which hits the man into the fan. The trap is set. Here comes the man. Ouch! Mouse trap. I guarantee it's the craziest trap you'll ever see. I win! I knew you were a winner. Mouse trap from Milton Bradley. Okay, so. Um, so the game, the reason it reminds me of what we're learning about right now is because there's all these pieces that work together. And so it starts um, with this very, let me see if I can find the very beginning part. So at the very beginning, there's like this wheel that you have to spin to get everything started. So that's sort of like the beginning of cell communication. It's like the attachment of a ligand to a receptor because that has to start or that has to happen before anything else will happen. And then once that happens, it triggers a chain reaction of events inside the cell. Um, much like this one, when you crank the wheel, it pulls a rubber band, creates some tension, which causes this thing to snap, which causes all these other changes. So the marble rolling, bumping this thing, flipping this toy, and then it, the vibrations cause the trap to fall and capture the mice. So the goal is to capture the mice, but you need all the other steps in between to happen just perfectly in order for that task to be accomplished. And that's, um, and it's really similar to, um, to what happens in cells. Uh, the other thing is that with this game, so I, I found this game, somebody was selling it at a garage sale a few years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this game. I'm going to take it to school. I'm going to set it up when we do cell communication. I got all excited. But the most important thing about this game is you have to have all the pieces because if one thing is missing, it interrupts the entire pathway. Like you can't get to the very end if you're missing the marble, if you're missing the little diver guy or, or whatever. So um, they were like, I don't know. I think all the pieces are there. And lo and behold, all the pieces were there, but the rubber band that snaps the initial beginning. And I was like, no big deal. I got access to rubber bands but no, it didn't work. I don't have a rubber band with the right tension. So my game doesn't work. I have the game, but it's like a big letdown. So sad. I even gave it to some kids one day to, because they were like, oh, cool. Like actual real, like little kids, five-year-olds. And they were like, oh, cool. Can we play this game? And I was like, good luck. It doesn't, it's like, if you can figure out how to fix it. And then they were like all problem solving and excited, but they couldn't fix it. And then they got bored too. They were like, no. But um, so if you kind of connect that to this uh, summary image, um, this is a representation of how cell communication works and how it triggers what's called the signal transduction pathway. So last class, we focused on the first step, which is what's shown on here on the left. You've got the signal molecule, also referred to as a ligand. Okay, it attaches to the receptor here in purple. Okay, and 
And that's the communication piece. But um, and here it's also referred to as reception. So re the, uh, the receptor receiving the signal, okay? That causes a series, it's like a chain reaction inside the cell of steps. So the receptor causes a change in another molecule that causes a change in another molecule and it goes down a series, uh, a pathway. And so that step is referred to as the transduction pathway or just transduction for short. So to transduce something means to change forms. So it's basically taking one molecule and changing it slightly so that it can then react in another um, chemical reaction that it wasn't able to react with before. And at the end of all those transduction steps, there's going to be whatever the end goal is. So here it just says activation of cell response, like the final step is the desired outcome. Um, so here it just says it could, this could be turning on or turning off an enzyme, like an enzyme that's maybe normally inactive gets activated or an enzyme that's always active, but isn't needed anymore can get deactivated. It can get blocked by an inhibitor. Um, it could be production of a protein that's needed at that moment. Like last class, we talked a little bit about insulin. Uh, that's a protein your body needs to create to regulate blood sugar levels, but it needs to create it when sugar levels are high. So that would be a signal that would activate the creation of that particular protein. Um, so like you have genes in your DNA for, for all sorts of different proteins like insulin that you don't need created all the time, but you need them created when you need them. So that's one example. Adrenaline is another example. You don't need adrenaline like nonstop. Okay. But you need it in those moments of urgency, um, or, of emergency and things like that. So, um, so sometimes that cell response is activating a gene in the DNA to get transcribed into RNA so that it can then get uh, translated into a protein by a ribosome. So we're going to see a lot of different examples, but in all the examples, what I really want to emphasize to you guys is to not get overwhelmed and stressed by all the, the names of the molecules, because they're going to call the molecules by what their names are, but that's not the important part. Okay, the important part is for you guys to be able to recognize this picture in every example. Can you find the signal molecule attaching to a receptor? Can you find the response at the end? And can you see all of the steps that had to happen in between? Okay, so, um, and then the other important thing is that you can uh, get more comfortable with explaining what do these arrows represent? Okay, so you're gonna see lots of diagrams, lots of arrows. So we're just gonna practice that. So we're actually gonna start um, with a kind of a simplified picture. This will be our first practice. Um, all of these pictures are in your textbook with labels and with captions, but I removed all the captions. I removed all the labels so that we can practice together just interpreting a diagram based on what information we do have access to. So here, all we have is shapes, colors, and maybe you might have some inclination about what those shapes and colors represent based on your prior knowledge, and maybe not. You can just use the shapes and colors um, to talk about them. So we got three pictures here. Um, a, B, and C, they represent a sequence of time. So A happens, then B happens, then C happens. It's the same location in the cell. Um, so today I'm using my, my randomizer student selector. I don't know, you guys can't see it because of my screen, but uh, I've got a virtual selector. Can you see it? No, it says Shoshana. Shoshana's not here today, but so she gets a pass. But the next person is Mina, who is here. Yay. So, so Mina, what do you see in picture A? Like, what do you see happening or what do you think might be happening? Is there anything you recognize what it is? Like, what can you tell me about picture A? Um, I kind of notice how like, even though they're together, it's like still separated, but it fits perfectly into each other, you know what I mean? Which like, things are you talking about? Uh, the, I don't know the name. It's like- The color, the you can talk the colors. The purple, yeah, the purple, those two, even though they're like together, like it's like not the same thing. They just fit perfectly into each other, you know what I mean? Awesome. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. 
All right, um, Amelia, can you add anything else to picture A? Is there anything else you recognize or can explain? Uh, there's like green little molecules next to it and they can't get in because there's like a flap. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so that's really important. Do you guys know what that orange, that dark orange line is representing? Sarah? Is it a membrane? It is. So, so that dark orange line is the membrane. So that means the, we've got the blue side and the orange side. Do you guys have any way of knowing, because it's not labeled, do you have any way of knowing which side is inside the cell and which side is outside the cell? Is there any clues that would help you make that judgment, Elisa? Maybe because like it's all part of the same cell. There's like a similar color for the plasma membrane and then also the internal. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way of thinking of it, right? So it's like the cell and part of the cell. So sticking with a similar color pattern. Um, Kylie? Um, the, is it the ligand or how do you say that word? The, I say ligand, but a lot of people say ligand. Yeah. Um, that's fine. It's on the side where it's blue and the ligand isn't supposed to be um, inside the cell. Awesome. Yeah. So that's another great clue that you've got, right? If you recognize what that is and if you kind of understand how that works, then that's another clue that it's outside. Um, you can also, it's subtle, but you can also see that the membrane is curved. Like it's not a perfectly horizontal line. And so the curvature also gives you a clue that if it's curving in, then the yellow or inside part would be like the inside of the cell because cells don't curve outward because they hold together this way. Um, okay, great. So what is this red arrow here? Um, what do you think that's representing? Let me go to Emma. What do you think this red arrow means? Um, I think it's the, I don't know what shape that is, but like receptor, like mm -hmm. going into the molecule so that the flap will open it. Okay, so this red thing is going into this purple thing. So the flap will open. Okay, so the red thing is a signal molecule or a ligand and the purple thing is a receptor. So a receptor receives, right? So this is our signal, this is our receptor. Okay, so this little flap will open. So yeah, if you look into picture B, you see the flap opens. All right, so once that's attached, the flap opens and then Nare A, where's Nare A? There you are. Um, why, like, why are these going in there? What's going on? Um, well, the flap is open. Totally. So last semester, you guys learned about a process where molecules move from one area to another area. Do you recognize what that process is that's happening here? If you don't, it's okay. No. Does anybody recognize what process this is? Sarah? Um, diffusion. It is diffusion. It's a specific type of diffusion because it uses this protein here. So Lena? Um, I think it was called facilitated diffusion. Mm -hmm. So this is facilitated diffusion. So the molecules are moving from an area of high concentration to lower. I mean, now there's a lot in there, but you can see here there was high here and low here. Okay, and then they're moving across with the help of a transport protein or a membrane protein. So this purple protein in the membrane has two jobs. One is to be a receptor for the ligand. A second is to help these molecules cross the membrane. All right, next question is, why didn't these molecules just cross the membrane on their own? Like, why didn't they just go through the orange part? How come they have to go through the purple protein? What does that tell us about the properties or the characteristics of the of those molecules? Anybody remember that from last semester? Like what sorts of things can or can't go through the membrane? Nari? Isn't it like the larger molecules? And I think the ones with a charge, I forgot what they're called though. Mm -hmm. It, that's exactly it. So large, it, they, it could be because these are too large to go through the membrane. It could be because they have a charge. So like they're ions um, or that they are hydrophilic or polar 
Um, so like slightly charged. So those are the things that'll go through transport proteins like this. Okay. If these were hydrophobic, they would be able to pass through the membrane directly. You're going to see some examples in this chapter of molecules that do go directly through the membrane. Um, so the same thing with this, this red ligand, it's also polar or too big or charged because otherwise it could go through the membrane too, but it doesn't, it, it attaches here. Um, okay. And then we see a bunch of arrows in picture B and a yellow box. Okay. The yellow box represents this idea of cell response. Okay. But why so many arrows? What do you think it means that there's lots of arrows? Um, so next on the randomized selector is Christiane. Any guesses as to why, um, why there's a bunch of arrows here, what that might represent? Um, could it be like there's just like multiple sequence for a response? Like mm -hmm. going to different like places. Yeah. They're serving the same purpose. Yeah. So these can be going multiple different directions, causing multiple different things to happen, or just a lot of the same response. So sometimes the signals will activate multiple different molecules. So those arrows could represent these are all the different things that are going to happen. Um, and sometimes it just is a reminder that one signal can cause lots of the same response. So like a bigger response, even just on one signal. Okay, in picture C, uh, is Yelena here? I think, no. Um, Colette, in picture C, what's happened? The ligand is moving out of the, re the receptor. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, what happens to the receptor? Or what happens to that flap? It closes. It closes, right? So this sh shows us that ligands don't permanently attach. They temporarily attach. They cause a change in the receptor, but then they can detach. And when they detach, the receptor goes back to its original shape. So, um, so this is a reminder that when a um, molecule attaches to a protein, okay, it's going to, in order for them to fit together like they've done here in picture B, there's going to have to be some rearrangement of the bonds and it's going to cause the shape to change a little bit. And it just so happens that this shape change allows it to function as a, as a channel that molecules can travel through. So as soon as that ligand leaves, okay, the shape will change back to how it was before. All right. So that's kind of the basic concept. So again, we see the three steps, okay. Reception, okay. That signal attaching, a transduction is everything that's happening. So the molecules crossing the membrane and then whatever these arrows are representing. Okay. And then the response is whatever's the final product or the final goal that's achieved from that reaction. Okay. So this one's really simplified because it just has one arrow. This one's a little bit more complex when you look at it. Um, there's a lot more, uh, a lot more arrows, a lot more um, things going on, but I want to show you guys, um, before we get to this one, I'm gonna show you guys kind of a simpler, uh, simpler animation. So this is linked uh, here on this first slide. So I'll show you this really quickly. Um, what I want you to pay attention to most is the shape changes that- Cells occur. communicate with one another by means of chemical signals. For the receiving cell, there are three stages in the signaling process, reception, transduction, and cell response. The cell targeted by a particular signal has a receptor molecule complementary to the signal molecule or ligand. The ligand fits like a key in a lock and triggers a change in the receptor molecule. Signal transduction converts the change in the receptor to a form that can bring about a cellular response. This might involve a series of steps, a signal transduction pathway that alters and amplifies the change. In the third stage of cell signaling, the transduction process brings about a cellular response. This can be any of many different cellular activities, such as activation of a certain enzyme, rearrangement of the cytoskeleton, or activation of specific genes. Right. So the main thing here, um, the most important thing, in my opinion, for you to notice, is um, the change that happens. Let me pause this. Okay, the change that happens uh, initially. So you have the receptor with this little green circle attached to it. 
Okay, all of these blobby things are proteins. Okay, so proteins, remember, have complex three-dimensional folded structures. They're gonna have an active site where a chemical reaction can occur. Okay, so this receptor normally has this green circle attached to it. Okay, but what happens is when that signal comes and attaches, I want you to notice how the purple receptor changes shape very slightly, okay? it kind of scrunched up. Like it was just like a little contraction, but that weakened the attachment of the receptor to the green circle. And that's what activates those transduction steps. That's what allows that, that molecule to detach and leave and then start reacting with other things in the cell. Okay, so it's just a sequence. Um, it's like dominoes falling. Okay, one, once one falls, the rest can continue to fall after that. Um, so on this slide, I'm just going to briefly talk about what we see here. Um, we won't watch this animation in class today, just um, just due to time and because we watched the announcements. But um, I would definitely encourage you to watch this at your own pace. It's about three minutes, but it's three minutes that you'll want to like pause, rewind, watch again and try to follow what's going on. But this one is introducing to you a pathway called a G protein pathway. Um, so there's a bunch of different kinds of receptors. One kind is called a G protein receptor. And it's called that because it works with the, a protein called a G protein. So this dark green molecule is called a G protein. Um, and basically it's a protein that bumps back and forth between the receptor and this other lighter green protein. This one happens to be called phospholipase C, but it could be any other protein. You're gonna see a lot of examples where it's something else, but it's always made of these three components, receptor, G protein, and then something else. Um, and essentially what happens, these arrows are representing um, kind of the reactions that are occurring. So when the signal molecule or ligand attaches to the receptor and the receptor changes shape, that causes a G protein that's activated with energy. This, this molecule should look familiar to you. Um, it looks a lot like ATP. It acts a lot like ATP, but it has a little bit different structure. So it's called GTP, um, and that, but that's energy. Same kind of energy that ATP provides because energy is essentially coming from the phosphate groups that are parts of these molecules. Okay, so this protein is going to activate this protein, and then this protein is going to do something else. So you see here this red arrow is pointing at this molecule, and then we've got two arrows coming out of it. So what just happened here? When this protein hits over here, these two arrows provide these two molecules, but what happened? Like what was the reaction that occurred right in this area? Can you, can you see what happened to this PIP2 molecule? Caroline? Um, so the PIP2 split and then the DAG is still attached to the membrane while the IP2 is like the second messenger. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what happened. It just split, it broke. So like this enzyme, this is essentially an enzyme who's breaking this molecule down into two products. All right, so the one product stayed attached to the membrane, the other product broke off and now it's floating around the cytoplasm. So it's labeled as a second messenger um, and the signal molecule is labeled as a first messenger. So think of a messenger as somebody who's, com or something that's communicating a message, like it's saying, hey, we need to do this. So the signal molecule or the ligand is always the first messenger in this like sequence. Um, but this second one, um, this is basically now a signal molecule within the cell that is going to act as a ligand over here in another part of the pathway. So um, the reason this is called a signal molecule or a messenger and these other things are not is because these are enzymes, they're proteins. And so those aren't considered messengers, they're considered proteins that are part of doing the process. Whereas this is just a molecule that's going to tell a protein to do something. So you'll notice over here, the IP3 doesn't 
it doesn't change. It doesn't like, it just binds to the, this receptor protein and causes it to open. So calcium can come out. So you see like what's happening up here with the membrane protein can also happen with membrane proteins on the organelles. So um, earlier in the year, you guys learned that the smooth ER stores calcium ions. So you see that here now being used, like, why does that matter? And that's because calcium ions are, are used in a lot of processes to activate. They're also second messengers that can activate processes. So, um, so again, this part here is very generalized, but you can see a bunch of, it's basically just a sequence of changes. Um, when you watch this animation, okay, the goal again is just to focus on um, noticing the shape changes happening to the proteins. Um, I'll let it play for just a second without, uh, without sound, just so that plasma membrane without some. Um, so again, if you look at what you see and maybe what you recognize, there's that signal molecule, there's a receptor, and then there's all these blobs. Okay. The blobs are proteins. Um, so you'll see when the signal molecule attaches to the receptor, you'll see it, it's going to change shape uh, slightly. Okay. That will allow it to chemically react with a G protein. And then, then this picture is like, whoa, there's so much stuff going on. Okay. Um, over here, there's a different type of receptor in the membrane. This is just to show you that not all receptors look the same, but they do all behave in a similar manner. They all depend on a signal molecule attaching to them to activate them. Um, skip ahead a little bit. So, um, so here, this is that the G protein pathway is the most common pathway that regulates most cell processes. So you'll um, see this in most of the examples you look at. Um, but again, in this one, we're looking at a signal molecule. Okay, when it attaches, you'll see a shape change that will then allow okay, this G protein molecule to slide over and react. Okay, um, here we see a GDP molecule attached to it. GDP is like ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Okay, but it's going to get replaced by a GTP, like something that has more energy. And, and that's kind of what helps activate that G protein to go activate this enzyme. So you see a shape change. It's super fast. That's what I mean. This is one of those things that you kind of want to watch um, in slow motion even. So again, when this comes over, notice the shape change that happens here. Okay, and that shape change is what allows it to function in the role it plays, okay, converting ATP to this other molecule called CAMP. So it just shows, again, sequence of reactions, um, but we won't get too deep into that today. We'll come back to it again next week. Um, so for the rest of today, um, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is to go ahead and open up in Google Classroom find where that is. Um, assignment 105, okay, signal transduction pathway inquiry. Um, okay, so we're just going to work on questions one through seven today. Okay, so not that many. It's, um, it's just model one, okay, which reviews a lot of what we've been talking about today together. So again, just like last class, you can either open it in Kami and type directly on the document, or you can just um, do it in your notebook if you'd prefer. Hey, if your Kami's freaking out and it's not working, when I send you to breakout groups, please ask one of your group members to share their screen so you can see the questions and then be involved in the discussion. And you can just do your work on paper, okay? Um, so... Sorry, let me find the document. Okay, so um, yeah. So when you guys get to your teams, just again, please, 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 <laughs> okay. Keep yourselves with your mics on because you can't have discussions when your mics are off. Um, and then just read through this together out loud. Maybe choose a team leader who's be willing to be the reader um, and then just work through the questions together as a team. So read the question, brainstorm ideas, 
Okay. And then after everybody's shared ideas, then you guys can agree on what's the best answer to write down. Okay. So uh, one through seven, I'll give you guys 15 minutes to work through those. And then if you need my help with anything, just call me into the room. And I think that's it. If you finish before 15 minutes is up, you can come back to the main room too. So I know that you're working through it faster. You may not need that much time. So let me really quickly get you guys into some rooms. All right. All right. Good luck. Happy talking. <clears throat> Four days to four hours of action, it's just seven three and nine thirty. Reading. Nine thirty to ten thirty. Over Hello. <clears throat> fit together. Well, now they're just like, yeah, I'm assuming they're like, 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 they